All right, praise the Lord. For this study, we're going to use slides a little bit different. Um, we're talking about pacifism, the fact that pacifism is antichrist. Pacifism is a belief that any violence, including wars, is unjustifiable under any circumstances and that all disputes should be settled by peaceful means. That's the definition of pacifism. Amen. Let me just start off with a note here. We are not teaching that all wars and violence is right. Most wars are unjust. Uh, they're about money and power and drugs and everything else. There is the world's way, however, and the right way, which is the biblical way. We are not promoting that you should become a violent macho person. We're not for that either. Pacifists, however, can be bullies without using one fist. Gandhi was a pacifist, an antichrist wicked man. Johnny Rotten, one of the most wicked rock stars, claims to be a pacifist. This does not make you a Christian. Biblical pacifism is not non-resistance. Pacifism is an attack on God-ordained law enforcement, and if you believe in it, you're heading to an eternal hellfire. We will now prove this biblically in this short video. We also have a two-part audio teaching with hundreds of scriptures at the link below, and I pray uh, if you're not convinced by this video, you'll watch that. Even if you are, I would, uh, I would certainly listen to those. Excuse me. It promotes idolatry, the false hippie Jesus, which so many believe in. And that is a big lie. And we know what happens to idolaters. They go to hell. Jesus was not a wimp. We're going to go over some scripture now. He whipped people, pulled over tables, threw the people out, threw the animals out of his temple. Are you now defiling his temple by believing in the false doctrine of pacifism? I pray if you are, you repent. The second slide here that we put up, the idea that Jesus taught pacifism would actually make Jesus a hypocrite and a sinner. He used force in driving men and animals out of the temple, which I just mentioned. Now we're going to go to scripture to prove it. John 2, 14 to 17, and found of the temple that they sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money sitting. Did he just yell at them? No, he went in and he had made a scourge of small cords and whipped them and drove them out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overthrew the tables. This is not pacifism. And he said unto them that sold dove, take these things out of here. Make not this the father, and make not my father's house a house of merchandise. And the disciples remembered that it was written, the zeal of thine house has eaten me up. That is 180 degrees opposite of pacifism. Again, if you're believing in pacifism, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. Don't. You need to repent. There are people actually out there, and if you bring it to its logical conclusion, you should believe this, that Jesus sinned in cleansing the temple. Evil and out of their mind for sure, but an actual example of a consistent pacifist. You'd at least be honest in a lying, filthy way. Pacifism attacks God or God's ordained law enforcement as incompatible with Jesus's kingdom. Law enforcement is set up by Jesus. This is ultimately an attack on God's authority. You're attacking his very own authority. Romans 13, 1 to 7, let every soul be subject unto higher powers. For there is no power but of God, the powers that be ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resist the power, resist the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou not then be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon them that do evil. Wherefore, ye must needs be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For this cause you should pay tribute also for they that are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor is to whom honor. If you deny this, you deny Christ. You deny the creator of all. If you're a pacifist, you are in the wrong, and I pray you see this. Let's go next. Pacifism justifies wicked criminals. Oh, don't touch them. No, we're Christian. Let, the, let them do what they want. We can't do anything. That's a wicked lie. Proverbs 17, 15 says, You, pacifist, he that justifies the wicked, 
and condemns the just, even both are an abomination to God. You are clearly an abomination to God if you believe in pacifism. The consistent pacifist must say their apprehension and sentence should not have happened and would not have happened had those brought them to justice been faithful Christians. That's the definition of insanity. People get their just judgment. It could be when they break into a house and get shot or whatever it is. That's their judgment. Pacifism also endangers the innocent. Would you want the only person in a position to help you or your loved one, your wife when you're at work or whatever, were violently attacked to be a pacifist who didn't believe it's morally right to harm the attacker of your loved one or use force against him in any way? Again, definition of insanity. Let's use another example. You walk into a gym or a public shower room and you see a man molesting a boy and you yell, stop that, stop that, yet he still does it. You must take physical action to help that little child. You will be in grave sin if you don't help stop that rape or attack or whatever's happening to that child. Don't try to use the I will call the police trick either. Nuh uh. It would take them minutes to get there at least, and the attack would be over. The evil must be stopped immediately, and you must take action, or you're just and guilty. You'll be an abomination. Don't go to the, on either side of the ditch here. Okay, pacifism also endangers the innocent. Listen, them. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and does it not, to him it is sin. Did you hear that? Therefore, it, you know it's right to help that little child that's being raped or beat up, but you don't do it. That's wicked. Number six, pacifism implicitly teaches the Antichrist view of mankind that man is basically good and peace can always be attained through things like conversation and mutual understanding. The judgment of Scripture gives uh, the judgment the Scripture gives of sinners is denied. You're denying Jesus justice. No wonder pacifism is also common among foolish liberals, universalists, New Ages that affirm the inherent goodness of the human race in contest in contrast to God's declaration in the Scriptures. Let's go to them. Pacifism is foolish, 1 Corinthians 3.19, for the wisdom of the world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he takes the wise in their own craftiness. The Bible says, where's the wise? Where's the scribe? Where's the disputer of this world? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? Don't be a fool. We must protect the poor, the downtrodden, the one that's getting attacked. Now, you can choose not to fight back if you're just by yourself. But if you see somebody that's getting attacked, you better help them or you're in sin. Pacifism vilifies God's own judgments that he gave through Moses as he gave laws dealing with promoting and maintaining a pure, just, and orderly society, including the basic principle of the death penalty, which is administered by man to murderers. Listen, Genesis 9-6, whoso sheds the blood of man by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. Period. By man must bear the sword on those people. Pacifism separates and distinguishes Jesus from the God of the Old Testament. If Jesus taught pacifism as the pacifist alleges, then who gave the law through Moses? If the pacifist is right and stays consistent, it could not have been Jesus. And that would mean most of the Bible should not be heeded. You call Jesus a liar if you're a pacifist. Jesus spoke in agreement with the law and the prophets. Remember, the New Testament wasn't written when Jesus walked. The apostles were talking about the Old Testament. As Noah stepped off the ark, Jesus laid down the law about the death penalty. God says the death penalty is just and commanded. It's God's judgment. Jesus was the word made flesh. This is not changed. You must support the death penalty for duly convicted, which means convicted by due process of the law, persons, if you are a Christian. And we read Genesis 9-6, if somebody sheds blood, kill somebody, murder someone, excuse me, they shall be killed and their blood should be shed. Amen. That's biblical. And if the consistent pacifist is right in that Jesus then was a false prophet who the Jews were right to seek to stone as leading them away from the law of God. The moral law of God in the Old Testament is perfect. We're not talking about the Levitical, the ceremonial law. Let's go to Isaiah 8-20. Listen. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it's because there's no light in them. If you're a pacifist, you do not have the Holy Spirit in you. You're an abomination to a holy God. Jesus would also then be an inconsistent hypocrite, 
since he also taught the people to keep the law and the prophets. Jesus did not come back to correct Moses. Let's go to it. Matthew 7, 12. Therefore, all, all things whatsoever you would that man should do to you, do ye even to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Then Jesus spake to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in whose seat? Moses' seat. Jesus spoke through Moses, amen, as he wrote down those words. Don't be a fool and not believe it. As in the Old Testament, is in the New. And then it goes on, verse 3, and it says, Observe these things, do them, but don't do after the Pharisees' work, because they said one thing and did the other. We must obey the law from beginning to end. And finally, if pacifism is true, then the apostles were either hypocrites or terribly confused since they baptized soldiers and jailers who bore the sword in serving the state. Read Acts 10, read Acts 16, as well as made, they brought him into the church and made use of armed protection of the Roman army in Acts 23. And if the apostles were hypocrites or terribly confused, then the New Testament also, which the apostles wrote, is totally unreliable and not the word of God, including the gospels. The apostles wrote those too. And then the rest of the Bible is made none effect. That is utter insanity. They baptized people that had swords in their hand and used them righteously. When you consider the pacifist doctrine and how insane it is and antichrist it is, think of the old serpent saying, yeah, hath God said, because that question is logically implied in pacifist doctrine. I'm calling you now to repentance, Luke 13, 3 and 5. I tell you, nay, except you repent from this wicked pacifism doctrine, you will perish. Don't think you're holy because you think you're all, you know, high and mighty. No, 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 no. You are a wimp if you don't protect somebody that needs protection. Closing remarks here I'm going to do. And uh, don't forget the link will be below. Paul used the protection of the Roman army, the armed Roman army, to protect himself using their God-ordained authority in Acts 23. That's not pacifism. Dealing with self-defense when preaching the gospel. A lot of people ask about this. What about preaching? Love does not provoke, and we should be praying, of course, all the time. Many antichrist preachers will unbiblically provoke others, and they will get their just reward. Whatever happens... We should be blameless. However, we certainly can defend ourselves biblically. If we are in serious danger, it should only be to get out of harm's way and no more. Diffuse the situation with whatever means necessary and no more. If that takes it to having to kill someone, well, it's the way it is, but we pray that it doesn't. Even martial arts, which is a worldly practice that is scripturally, uh, that, that is script, uh, spiritually, excuse me, wicked, will tell you not to use any more force than necessary. Macho pride, which many have, is hateful. We must honor all men. Many say nasty things to provoke people to wrath. If they try to use self-defense in this instance, they're just like the heathen, sinners preaching to sinners, sinners beating up each other or killing each other, they'll go to hell. If we are by ourselves and have to use deadly force to stop deadly force, it's biblical to do so. You may choose to die if you're single and you're alone there and you wish to do that. Both options are righteous. If, however, someone else is in danger, you are commanded to help them. Please study and pray on these things so you are equipped and prepared for these situations. To Jesus be all the glory. Remember, the law from beginning to end, Old Testament, New, minus Levitical and ceremonial, etc., is perfect. Psalms 19, 7 through 10, I'll just give you the highlights. The law of the Lord is perfect. The statues of the Lord are right. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. And the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold. Yeah, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than the honey and the honeycomb. I pray that you are listening. I pray you repent if you believe in this antichrist pacifism doctrine. Jesus is Lord, to him be all the glory.